Hey guys, Ricky here, owner of DODcontract.com. This is the DOD Contract Academy podcast. And this week I'm coming to you solo. We're not going to interview anybody. I just wanted to talk about a technique, a strategy that a lot of companies use to sell to the government that I don't address very often on the show, but I want to talk about today because I don't feel like there's a strong grasp, especially amongst small businesses, of how using a reseller in their approach to the government uh, can be utilized. Now, I've talked about subcontracting a lot. So, and certainly you're probably aware you can be a prime on a government contract, or you could have a subcontract with a prime. And there's lots of strategy and techniques involved with that. But I would say one of the biggest things there is one of the biggest challenges if you're the subcontractor is often the prime is the one engaging on the opportunities and dealing with the program office. And sometimes they keep out the sub, right? Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find the information that you need to um, develop the relationships that are so important when selling to the government. But, you know, they handle a lot of the proposal process and all of that. So there's pluses and minuses of being a sub. Now, as a reseller, this is just the way I think of it. The reseller, when I think of a reseller, I think of somebody that is going to have the prime contract with the government. But as a subcontractor, I'm probably still the one doing the selling, right? So there are lots of examples, uh, and I don't want to, uh, you know, put weight behind any one company. But a lot of times, a reseller will be a larger company, and they will get a variety of contracts like GSA. They might get NASA Soup. They might have, you know, you name it, um, ITES. You know, and I'm naming a lot of kind of cyber IT related ones. But you know, the point is that they'll pick up a lot of these IDIQs and GWACs and GSA, so they'll have access to all of these. Uh, larger contracts, which you as a small business probably don't have. That's important because anything that comes through those, a lot of the work that comes through those contracts isn't going to be publicly available for competition. It's usually going to be, if it is available for competition, it's probably just for the companies that are on those contract vehicles. So in lieu of going out and getting the contract yourself, using a reseller could be a very viable option for your business. Often the reseller could list your business on one of these contracts and kind of take care of that work. So what are some of the other reasons you might use a reseller, right? You say, hey, Rick, why don't I just go out and get these contracts? Well, you could. One of the things that, uh, in addition to access to existing contracts that you don't have, uh, one of the things that is um, important, is, especially as a small business, if you're, you're just getting your feet off the ground, is these resellers, a good one's going to have a lot of existing relationships that, and they will make you privy to some of that. Every relationship is a little bit different, right? But a reseller is usually just taking a small percentage of the contract. And a good one will allow you, especially if they have a lot of clients, they're not going to be able to do the interface. So what you could do is use them. You still maintain the relationship. You do the selling, but then you use the reseller as kind of the middleman to get your contract with the government. And and often you can use established relationships with them. Something else that you know I personally like is you don't necessarily want to be bugging the program office, the contracting officer, and the program manager every week if you've got you know a contract in the works or you're trying to find out about an opportunity. You can use the reseller to do some of that pestering for you, you know, to to get some intel, to get some additional information. So it's another way to kind of communicate with the program office. It's also a way to lower some of the costs. So often a reseller is going to take care of all the paperwork involved in a transaction. So you might still have to you know, produce quotes and whatnot, but they will handle the actual contract with the government. And that is a huge paperwork burden. And I hate a paperwork burden personally. So you know, if you're in the same boat as me and you don't want to hire people to manage the contracts in your organization, like people having people dedicated to that, it, it may help you to or may relieve some of the burden to use a reseller. And by the way, there are some companies that only sell to the government through resellers and they are doing amazing. Some companies use them for just as part of their plan, right? So depending on what industry you're in, things things change. So I don't want to get too specific on, uh, on the strategy, but just know that there are many viable options to use a reseller for with your business and, and they can all be profitable, whether you're just using them exclusively or whether you're um, you know, using a kind of a multiple resellers, you know, whether you're using those in, in addition to, you know, sole source contracts and competing for things. So 
there's a lot there. Now, what other potential benefits are there to using resellers? Well, for one, you are reducing risk and liability because you don't own the prime contract, right? So if you're working uh, with a reseller and they own the prime contract, that could reduce some of the overhead costs for you as a small business. I think one of the biggest, maybe if not the biggest, maybe the second biggest reason for using a reseller is just uh, the potential for growth. Any small business that doesn't have the contracts, that doesn't have the networks, that isn't big. I mean, frankly, a lot of these resellers have been around for a long time and they can help you exponentially grow within the government using their network, using their contracts and using their expertise. You can learn a lot from them. And, you know, you're going to find really fast that if you want to be, you know, a solopreneur and, you know, not uh, not have the relationships and not teaming with people and, and not develop those partnerships, selling to the government is probably not for you um, because you know, look, the government is people, right? It's a lot of different people with a lot of different authorities and funding. And, you know, a lot of times requirements are complex. Uh, you know, developing relationships and teaming and partnering on things is just part of the process. So what I would encourage you to do is take a look at reselling. You know, think about it. If, if you haven't considered it as a, a possible strategy for going after some of these contracts, I think it could be extremely viable for you. Um, I love working with resellers. I think they are, in, and I had a, maybe a different opinion when I was in the government. I don't think I realized how valuable they were for businesses, you know, the relationships and, and everything else. So I think for you, take a take a look at it. You know, I would consider it. Hopefully, this was a good podcast for you guys to listen to. If you do need any assistance selling to the government, check out our website, dodcontract.com. You know, we have everything from training to, uh, you know, custom done with you services uh, to help you sell to the government, no matter what stage of growth you're in, uh, whether we're optimizing what you're doing now or just helping you kind of springboard and get started. And if there is something you'd like us to talk about, on the podcast, just leave it in the comments. And, you know, we get a lot of our recommendations through comments, through emails. Some people submit directly through the website and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love it if you left a review. Next week, we have some great interviews coming up. Stay tuned for that. You're really going to love it. Thanks again for listening to the podcast and I will see you next week.